right, this one's a monster. This is Kids of 99, which is track four from Disaster Radio's Charisma 2011. This one ended up being quite a sort of hypnagogic, vapor wavy type piece. And actually accentuated in the fact that um, Simon Ward edited the intro to Beyond 2000, the show, the show about the future from Australia. Uh, we took one scene from the start of Beyond 2000 and looped it for a promo video, which will be included in the materials. Um, Kids of 99, the idea is that there was, uh, and this is no, by no means a personal slight, uh, there was a group from New Zealand called Kids of 88 and I thought oh that's kind of that's a great way of uh, implying you know you're making this kind of 80s dance music but I was like what, what about the kids of 99 you know what about the 12 year olds now because given that we were in 2011 and it seemed like the idea about a future was something from the past that you know the kids of 99 are going to be the ones that are living in the future and that the 80s were sort of obsessed with the idea of the future. We've gone way too far. That's a spoiler. So we got a lot of like eventide harmonizer effects coming in. I call it this, but it's this uh, Toby Bear man shifter, um, pitch shifter with a uh, delay in the feedback loop. Every delay is two semitones up. You cannot, you can't hear it as well on the tails, but you certainly hear it at the start. I'm, I'm trying to make this sort of crystalline, crystalline world, this kind of uh, pastoral of this sort of uh, liquid crystal, holographic. There's, there's wave sounds throughout the whole thing. They come in and out quite quite subtly. And I think they're just done with um, filter sweeps and EQ. Yeah, a filter sweep to give you the body of it and then, then an EQ to give it a, the same kind of slicing sound that, of waves coming up onto sand. I love the kick. I love how much body the kick has. Like the most of these tunes have like a biz bizarre amount of pre-emphasis on the the low end. And if I was mastering this now, again, there would be a whole lot of low cut happening to the to everything below a kilohertz. Microcorg preset A81 is like a nice little arpeggiator. It's kind of sci fi bed sound effects, which are stacked up against this sample of me breathing out. Um, this. To me, that's kind of like an advertising. If you were having an ad for like a refreshing electrolyte drink, you would have these kind of. This kind of sting. The drums have a vocoder on them. I don't know if I can play them back with just the vocoder. But the, the vocoder is doing this octave, quick octave bass line thing. And there is a whole bunch of uh, delays and stuff happening to make this vocalized, vocoded drum sound that's quite low and fat. And the original idea for the whole tune came out of this idea about vocoding a drum kit. This 
So on the record now, we're we're up to track four, so we should be getting into something a little slower, a little more vibey. And this is kind of a classic halftime intro, going to like a double time, back to halftime rhythm device. Let's go. Yeah, so a, a computer bra- computer arpeggiator type effect. And then this sort of hoover, trance hoover sound. This is got a unison detune. Yeah, across this whole record, I'm using sort of stacking, degradation, multi-tracking to make the computer sound lo-fi. That's basically the idea. To give the, com- the computer vibe through labor rather than uh, getting a, a four-track tape machine or something and working off that. It's like really getting into the, the way things stack and phase and the way things are just arranged to make something really fat. And these, particularly this section, is very rhythmic, rhythmically complex, so we're being simple on the melody on top, with just this descending melody. Almost an arpeggio, or an ostinato. The main melody. So we have this sort of main melody which goes around this uh, A natural, just quite sort of stepwise, and then that's accentuated by these rising parts. So these, it's kind of a very consonant beginning, and then the second part has these sort of quite dissonant um octave jumping particularly the semitone here uh gives me for me a little sort of wacky sort of john fox type this sort of paranoid sound but mixed in with all this other rich stuff so you sort of don't notice it as paranoid rather it's just got energy to it There's one cowbell in the whole song and it's that at that, that point there's the point where I like I discussed with Ailani you do the wink. There's this one at the uh, at a reiteration of a melody just to be like, you know, you have you've you yes, you have heard it again. So at this point, we've built this sort of high energy part that um, will then drop down into this half time part, uh, featuring a lot of recorded hand percussion. Um, 
that I did this is one of the last things I did on the record actually was um, record all this hand percussion on my buddy's um, large diaphragm condenser mic. Uh, it was the only point I spent money on the record. I bought a uh, like a soda cup from Embassy Theatre and filled it full of um, coins and uh, rice and stuff to make these um, hand percussions that you'll hear on this halftime section. But yeah, it's 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 part of that same imp impression of this sort of computer generated world a kind of uh, liquid pastoral sort of frozen crystal sea uh, sort of hologram virtual reality journey scene whatever it is <laughs> I love that the uh, there's a the, the drum vocoder follows the melody of the solo here. I think it just sounds totally cool. said the session is a monster so we, we go from like a half time half time to full time to half time epic and then back to or do we stay on half time it just gets more epic it gets more kind of transcendental This uh, da na na. This is a uh, very like very me. Getting to the root via whatever it is, scale degrees. Are we, are we sort of seven to one, whatever it is, six to whatever. It is. I use that part of the scale all the time in that way. This kind of like da da da. It's part of all my hooks and stuff. It's like a very, um, very deeply ingrained in what I'm doing. It, it could be from like the melody from a lot of Commodore 64 tunes. Um, and I love, I love, 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 love how the, the low vo drum vocoder sounds here. Yeah, so so the whole drum bus goes out to a bus called Voco Drums, and then that's got a Echo DC vocoder, very old plug-in. Look at it, semi Comic Sans, beautiful. And the the trick is that if you are vocoding drums that with a vocoder, you tend to accentuate more of the waveforms around the fundamentals of your pitch. Long story short, low notes get more accentuated by the kick. High, higher elements, high hats and stuff get more accentuated by higher notes. So, a, 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 a drum kit is a much more wider band source for a vocoder than a voice. So, that, that was my motivations with this song: is to make something that used a vocoder drum track. Um, I had to tick, tick one of those off, you know. Anyway, 
we jump across to this uh, sort of writing writing it out section with this sort of pent- pentatonic repeating. Geo's behind it. Drum, drum vocal to doing this thing. Bring in the string synth. These kind of random synth waves that I made underneath it. In the sort of TV ending, though, I messed up the, uh, there's a cute little uh, riff in the end that's got this kind of, trying to go for like a TV title ending. Um, so yeah, stacks and stacks of instruments. There's Wave Station, something that will come up in Eyeliner later on, one year later. FM7 doing a kind of sync wave. A lot of stuff from Zero G Nostalgia. Krumar performer strings through a, a might be a small stone phaser type. On a waves enigma. Giving it this kind of cassette warble. I was obsessed with string synths at this time, like uh these these sort of tambas, very late seventies, Jean Michel Jarre or you know, everywhere shows up, but these sort of synthetic strings, very uh, very dear to my heart. More monophonic stacking between um, Novation V Station, SQ8L, and uh, another instance of V Station. As I discussed in U1, none of these will be uh, uni- uh, detuned globally at all, so they'll be all locked to A440 or whatever their idea of A440 hertz is. The whole song would sound so much more richer if I did detune all these synths. But then again, the, the, the bass line is pretty, um, pretty woolly. In terms of sound effects, what have we got here? Really is a monster of a session that even confused me at the time and still confuses me now. Um, but this is the prison that I've created and trapped myself in of my own design. Yeah, these um, arpeggio effects from Microcork. Then these sort of bursts. Analogous to the R sample. Same sort of sonic world. Wave sounds. Then a synth one boop. The same sort of medial uh, supermarket um, supermarket counter stopwatch interface design sound. It's like the hover cars counting the number of kilometers you're going or whatever it is, this kind of 
sound of technology in technological music. Kind of for me, it's got this kind of M83 like sonic, uh, filmic, uh, post rock, whatever they would call this sort of semi electronic symphonic sound, but with a sort of double time synth pop part to it. Was well, even library music at this point with the, with the up tempo parts, and then. Then going into this more sort of fictional subjunctive halftime. Yeah, so that's about it with Kids of 99. Like a lot of songs on this record, most of the motivations are sonic rather than musical. There's not things like a lot of key modulation. It's it's I'm exploring one harmonic set through a lot of different sounds as opposed to exploring a lot of harmonic ideas through one instrument. It's the, the opposite of that. And of course the the um vocoded drum sound is the main motivation behind the whole thing. Kids of 99. 99. 